Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here this evening. We pray you forgive us our sin, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord, according to 1 John 1, 9. Lord, that's an interesting verse that we, uh, we kind of read, take it for granted. Lord, you said if we confess our sin, that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, I think about your sufferings and dying on the cross and shedding your blood and the Holy Ghost and the person of Melchizedek, God's eternal high priest, took your blood to the altar in heaven, to the tabernacle that God pitched and not man and presented it there before the altar for the sin of the whole world. But Lord, as we think about it, a lot of folks will not receive the Lord Jesus Christ and they'll reject him. And so though you died for the sin of the whole world, yet you only paid for those that would receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's how we can go to 1 John 1, 9. According to your foreknowledge, while you suffered in hell, you had to pay for every sin that we ever committed or will commit in order for us to be justified before God the Father through your blood. And we thank you for that according to Psalm 139, verse 15, when all our members were written in a book when as yet there was none of them, when you were curious, when it was church was curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Lord, we thank you for that. And help us not to take that lightly. And Lord, I thank you for bringing the family home safe today. I thank you that you got my wife to the doctor and back without any accidents. And uh, Lord, I, I pray that you'd heal her up, Lord. Give her a speedy recovery. It's terrible to be in the situation she's in for so long. Lord, we pray for the others that are sick. Brother Raj, uh, Lord, we're praying for him that you give him a full recovery as far as his leg and everything. And Lord, hopefully in the next day or two, a couple of days, he'll be able to get out of a, he'll be able to get out of a, the lockdown. And Lord, uh, pray for my brother Robert. Lord, uh, with his uh, chest and all, I pray the COVID test comes back negative, and that he just had the flu or a bad cold. And uh, watch over him and my brothers and sisters, my nieces and nephews, aunts and uncles, all my cousins. My son, my daughters, my granddaughters, great-granddaughter, grandsons. I pray that you'd be with them, watch over them, keep them. And I pray for those that are lost that they might get saved before it's eternally too late. And Lord, I pray for our country. Lord, we're in tough shape right now, but I know that you're in control. Lord, be with us tonight as we study thy word. Of course, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we pray and ask these things and also Lord for Teresa that you fix her head Lord uh, I know you made her that way when she was born, but I'm talking about the headache part I pray you help her with that And we thank you for it and brother Steve and his surgery coming up Lord watch over him in Jesus name we pray. Amen Well, hello all it's So good to be here this evening Let's see. We're going to try to play this song. I don't know if it'll go all the way through or not, but if it don't, then we'll shut it off and go on.
Are you ready? Yes. All right. We're not Willy Wonka. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hello. Paul and Luke were taking a trip when the South and Blue saw they boarded a ship. Destination already planned. They were guided by God's mighty hand. But soon after the ship set sail, they encountered a stormy gale. It was a sun did not shine, oh Paul did not whine. He said, I believe God, and I believe God, though the lightning is flashing. I believe God, though the thunder is crashing. I believe God, when the storm is all past. We'll raise the other side, safe at last, for the Lord stood by me in the darkest night. Since we tried our mind, everything is alright. We're never alone, we'll make it all home, for I believe God. A long life's past, there'll be storms to face, but we're gonna make it by amazing grace. It's good for each mile, it's good for every trial I've gone through. So I'll keep holding to God's mighty hand. I know one day I'll reach heaven's dream. When I reach the other shore, gonna shine once more. I said, I believe God. And I believe God, though the lightning is flashing. I believe God, though the thunder is crashing. 
me in the darkest night. Sex we child of mine, everything is alright. We're never alone, we'll make it our home. For I believe God. No, we're never alone, we'll make it our home. For I believe God. Amen. Alright. Okay. Uh, you saying pray for Pat there, Johnny? I see a little message there. And Ruth is up there in the Poconos enjoying the snow. Amen. All right. Well, he said we're going to pick up tonight on Melchizedek. He said it was God's eternal high priest. And, uh, In Psalm 110, verse 4, speaking to the Lord Jesus Christ, he said that he would make him a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, as we said, uh, as we said last week, a lot of folks try to make Melchizedek the Lord Jesus Christ, which that can't be. Uh, Melchizedek is called the king of righteousness. The Lord Jesus Christ is called the, or the king of peace. Jesus Christ is called the prince of peace. Amen. So I want to start in chapter five of Hebrews. We want to read down through here. Uh, and then we're going to take you over to some other verses, one in the Old Testament and, and some uh, ones in the, New Testament. So let's go to chapter 5 of Hebrews and we'll begin in verse 1. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron, Moses' brother. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest. But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, in the Old Testament, if you're looking up Melchizedek, it's mentioned two times. Uh, it's mentioned in Psalm 110, verse 4, and in Genesis uh, chapter 14, in verse 18, where Abraham offered up tithes uh, to Melchizedek. And in the Old Testament, it's spelled M-E-L-C-H-I-Z-E-D-E-K. And when it's translated over here in the New Testament, it's spelled M-E-L-C-H-I-S-E-D-E-C. -E -E Amen. So in the Old Testament, the S is a Z and the C is a K. And it says in who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard and that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing you are dull of hearing. He says, he's talking about Melchizedek of whom we have many things to say, but he says, and hard to be uttered seeing you are dull of hearing for, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. <clears throat> For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. 
for he is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of doctrines of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again under repentance, seeing they crucified themselves, the Son of God afresh, and put them to an open shame. Now, you remember when we read through the book of Hebrews, we expounded on those verses there. And he says, For the earth which drinketh in rain that cometh off upon it, and bringeth forth herbs and meat for them, by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessings from God. But he which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to the full assurance of the hope unto the end, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, Surely blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater. And an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. That by two immutable things and that which it was impossible for God to lie. He said we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into the, within the veil. Now look at this verse. Whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus. All right. Now remember in the Old Testament, in the tabernacle, only the high priest, could go into the most holy place behind the veil one time a year and not without blood for himself and for the nation. He said, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now chapter seven, it says for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Now that was in Genesis chapter 14 and verse 18. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. Now look at this. First being by interpretation, king of righteousness. And after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. And uh, when it says king of Salem, I believe he's talking also about Jerusalem. Amen. Spell it out. He says, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now look what he says in verse 4. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of spoils, and verily, they that are the sons of Levi who received the office of the priesthood, amen, that was 430 years later, uh, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them, 
talking about Melchizedek, received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Now, hold your place here because we're coming right back. But remember in verse one or verse two, I'm sorry, said he was king of righteousness and also king of peace. Amen. So let's go back to Romans in chapter 14 real quick. Romans in chapter 14. Now, remember what he said about the kingdom of God over in John, that the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, but is within you. And except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Remember that he said that for by one spirit, we are all baptized into the body of Christ. Well, in verse 17 of Romans 14, it says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. See, in the Old Testament, it was meat and drink, the kingdom of heaven. It was a physical kingdom on earth. This is a spiritual kingdom, which is within you that will be manifest one day. He says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Well, if it's not, what is it? He says, but righteousness and peace. Now, who's the king of righteousness? Melchizedek. Who's the king of peace? Melchizedek and joy in the Holy Ghost. So who would that make the Holy Ghost? Make him Melchizedek. Amen. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God to prove them men. So if we walk in the spirit, we wouldn't fulfill the lust of the flesh. We'd have peace with God. Where's that peace come from? Walking in the spirit through the Holy Ghost, who is Melchizedek. So we go back to chapter 7. He says in verse 9, And as I may so say, Levi also who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should arise or should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. He's talking about the tribe of Judah. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Now, who has an endless life? God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Amen. For he testified, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So that is the priest that operated in heaven. He said, for there is very, verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitable profitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did by the which we draw nigh unto God. Now remember that when the Lord shed his blood, there had to be somebody to offer it up to God, the father in heaven. And that was God, the Holy ghost in the person of Melchizedek, God's eternal high priest. And in as much as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, the Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. 
And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. I like this next verse. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he is, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. One man said one time that God saves us from the guttermost to the uttermost. Amen. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity. But the word of oath, which was since the law, maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. Amen. So we see here that he's the king of Salem. He's the king, which is the, by interpretation, the king of peace and king of righteousness. And he said that the kingdom of God that is within each and every one of us that have been born again. He said, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So next thing. I think I read it to you last week over in Revelation chapter one and first Peter two nine Revelation chapter one. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have to excuse me tonight. Not feeling real well. And uh, it's kind of hard to read and talk with the, your head throbbing. Amen. I guess uh, maybe the Lord wants to make me as perfect as Teresa. <laughs> All right. Let's see. All right. He says that he has made us kings and priests unto God, his father. Amen. He washed us in his own blood, washed us from our sins in his own blood. And he's made us kings and priests unto God. So what are we supposed to do as priests? I realize that most people do not understand that they have an obligation to operate in a priesthood unto God. Now, let me go back here real quick. Let's go back to Ezekiel. No, Galatians. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Then I'm going to take you to Ezekiel chapter 28. Galatians chapter 5. If my page is still where it's supposed to be. Amen. In verse. <laughs> I'll be done. Somebody took my book out of my Bible. I think some pages fell out of it. Let me go back here and find them. All right, Galatians 5, 22. There we go. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit, that's capital S, that's speaking of the Holy Ghost. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. That's three. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. That's six. Faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Now, there's nine fruit of the spirit. Amen. Nine fruit. In the Old Testament, under the Levitical priesthood, the priest, when they went in, they wore a breastplate on them. And we went over this before, had 12 stones on it. And on those 12 stones had the name of each tribe and they were to bear them upon their breast. Now that was in the Levitical priesthood. In the Melchizedek priesthood, I'll take you back here and show you somebody who was in that priesthood. That was Lucifer before he fell. And we'll begin in verse 13. 
He says, thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Now, when we read down through here in verse 18, he says, thou has defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Lucifer at one time had sanctuaries. He was a religious person. Uh, him and the Lord went together to the house of the Lord to worship. That's over in Psalm. But in verse 13 he says, thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Count them, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. All right. So here's nine stones, and they're set in gold. And I remember studying the priesthood and Pastor Randall and I were down in Orangeburg with the church and we were playing a, a ball game and he was on the winning team and I was on the losing team. And we were switching sides and coming off the field. And I said, Pastor, he said, what? I said, I know what was on those nine stones on that breastplate, the Melchizedek priesthood, because Lucifer was in that priesthood before he fell. He said, what? I said, the nine fruit of the spirit over in Galatians. So the breastplate that you and I spiritually wear as kings and priests in a royal priesthood should have nine stones across here. And those are love, joy, peace, long suffering, temperance, meekness. Amen. Nine stones engraven with the fruit of the spirit. And we're supposed to operate in that priesthood. Those things ought to be manifest. Brother Billy Parson preached Sunday about add to your faith virtue and the virtue knowledge. And it, it says that if you do these things, it makes you a partaker of the divine nature. But see, it also, we ought to have some, some sacrifices to offer up also. We have seven of them. I think I read them to you the other night. One, the body. Two, faith. See, what's faith? Well, in Philippians 2, 17, it says, Yea, if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith. Amen. You're doing this for someone else as unto the Lord. Uh, body. We're to present our bodies to live in sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove that good and acceptable and perfect will God. Ephesians 5, 18 on the body, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be you filled with the spirit. And then our offerings. In Philippians chapter four and verse 18, he says, Paul says, I have all in abound. I am full, having received from Ephroditus the thing sent from you, an odor of a sweet savor, amen, a sacrifice, well-pleasing unto the Lord. What was he offering? Things to support the preacher, which was Paul. So did that unto the Lord. God says he inhabits the praise of his people. The fourth one is praise, amen. We offer up praise unto God. Psalm 50, 23, Hebrews 13, 15, and Jeremiah 33, 11. And then the offering of thanksgiving. The Bible says, and everything give thanks for this, the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I told a customer today, and man, he can't seem to catch a break. Uh, everything's happening, and he's a chicken farmer. And, and uh, I said, well, here's what I do. He said, what? I said, thank the Lord for it. He never said I had to like it. He just said, give thanks. And I said, I used to pray, Lord, I don't like what's going on right now in my life. But you said in everything, give thanks. So I'm going to give you thanks for it. But you never said I had to like it. Amen. There's a sacrifice of thanksgiving. The sacrifice number six of righteousness. Just doing right. Amen. And number seven, joy.
Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you, you shall be glad also with exceeding joy. We're to offer up these sacrifices. We're to do our soldiership. We're to put on the whole armor of God. We're to do our priesthood, as he said in Revelation 1.6 and 1 Peter 2.9. And we're to walk as a son. So let me ask you, how many people out here are really walking in the priesthood? Under God. That's what we're commanded to do. He has made us kings and priests. We're to offer up sacrifices. We're to make intercession. We're to pray. Go back in the Old Testament and see what those priests did. Not only offering up the sacrifices, we're making intercession. Moses made intercession for the people. We're supposed to make intercession for folks. Even this one. You know who this one is? Mr. Schiff. Adam Schiff. I despise that liar, but I'm commanded to pray for him. Amen. And then Pelosi. Pelosi. That's a wicked woman. I'm telling you, that's a wicked woman. But you know, she just needs Jesus. Yep. And Mr. Biden, now that he's the president-elect right now, I'm not to speak evil of dignitaries. Amen. I can speak the truth. The guy's whacked. But pray for him. Amen. And all the others, all the other crooks in Washington, pray God deal with their souls. Thank you for tuning in tonight. May God bless you. Oh, and I almost forgot. Pray for Brother Tommy's dad. He's in real rough shape with his eyes. Let's pray. Grace, Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come boldly before thy throne of grace, Father, to obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. We ask you, Lord, that uh, the prayer request we prayed at the beginning of the service, Lord, that you would hear and answer those. And Lord, we pray for Mr. Kelly, Lord, that you might help him with his eyes. Lord, that you might clear him up that he could see again. Lord, I pray for his wife, Miss Kelly. Lord, watch over him, protect him, and keep him. Give him peace. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen.